Let's see what some of the uh, the new games are. 2023 was heralded as the biggest year in the history of video games to ever video game a game of videos, and as that incoherent word salad might suggest, it was a busy year for us I here wonder at how I many times you had to retake that. GN. That said, 2024 is shaping up to have quite a few big releases as well to keep you from finishing your 2023 backlog that you piled up because you were so busy tormenting Koroks and trying to get to second base with Shadowheart. Anyway, here are some of 2024's biggest upcoming games. Check it out! Now, before we get into it, just a quick disclaimer that video game release mm -hmm. dates are about as reliable as weather forecasts at this point, so it's possible, if not likely, that a few of these get delayed or otherwise shuffled around. Also, this is by no means a comprehensive list of everything coming out in 2024. It is just a handful of games that we thought you might like to have on your radar. If something that you're excited about personally didn't make the cut, I swear it has it's nothing personal or political or weird or sinister or Machiavellian. We just... We, we can only talk about so many games before our video editor dies of exhaustion. Oh my god, I almost died! No! I almost Jesus died. Christ. Oh, it's, scary. Thank you. it's okay, it's alright, it's alright. If you want a more thorough roundup- oh, I never edited that heavy. That's why I got really good at talking. It's because I didn't want to have to cut. Every month we put up a new video detailing that month's upcoming releases, so keep an eye out for that every month, around the time rents do, maybe. That January one is good already one. up, so go watch that once you're done with this. If you're sitting around checking your enchanted hourglass, waiting on that Prince of Persia Sands of Time... See, I'm really excited for this game. Like, I, 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 I think this looks awesome. Like, this is just like, kind of like Metroidvania style. I like it. Remake. Good news, Ubisoft whipped up a nice 2.5D Prince of Persia yeah, this Metroidvania is to cool. hold you over. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, goes back to the series' side-scrolling platformer roots, but with some modern mm -hmm. twists. That's out for basically everything January 18th. Was sick as fuck. On January yeah, 26th, awesome. hot on the heels of last year's new installments of beloved fighting games Street Fighter and Mortal yeah. Kombat, Tekken enters the fray with its eighth entry, which is putting those new-gen consoles through their paces and really showing what Unreal 5 can do. That's on PS my My opinion is like... I think besides, like, maybe two characters in Tekken, like, I think Street Fighter is just way more interesting to watch, and it's just way cooler. Like, Tekken's nice, but... I, I, I don't know, I think Street Fighter just has so much more, like, iconic, better characters. I think even more so than Mortal Kombat. PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. That same day on new gen and PC, as well as last gen, is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. That's a really expensive way of saying Yakuza 8, though the series has officially rebranded to its Japanese mm -hmm. name, kind of like how Dragon Quest was Dragon Warrior in the West for decades, and then they finally yeah. made the switch to Dragon Quest Worldwide. Anyway, notable Dragon Quest player Ichiban Kasuga returns for another wacky hero's journey, and this time he's teaming up with semi-pro pocket circuit racer and UFO catcher enthusiast Kazuma Kiryu, who you may recognize from, like, the last nine Yakuza games. Oh. Or maybe not. He has a new haircut. Who knows? Yeah, that game looked kind of like, uh... I, I never really gave a shit about that. Like, I mean, I don't know, maybe it might be interesting to look at, but I don't think I'll ever play that one. He's so mysterious. As you probably heard by now, the Arkham Architects over at Rock City are ditching the Dark Knight and trying their hand at a co-op looter shooter starring Tass- Didn't this game get, like, announced and people made videos about how boring and uninspired the concepts were and the gameplay was? I feel like it was, like, even a topic of how bo like, y yeah, I mean, guys... Force X, better known as the Suicide Squad. I don't know. The squad's mission? Kill the Justice League. The name of this game? The Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. You, you probably could have put that one together. Okay. The release date? February 2nd for new gen and PC. That same day, if you miss Persona- I mean, there's no way they're gonna be able to beat Superman, right? There's no way they can beat The Flash. There's no way they can beat Green Lantern. There's no shot. Like, what? why is this even a fucking game? It's not even a close. Like, even Wonder Woman. Three when it was on PS2, and then on PSP, Jesus. and then later playable in PS Vita. Well, first of all, shame on you. But second of all, good news, because it's been fully rebuilt as a new modern console RPG, and it's coming to everything but Switch, which is sad, because the Switch is the closest thing we have anymore to a PSP or a Vita. Who knows? Maybe they'll port it. The original Helldivers was a tough-as-nails top-down co-op twin-stick shooter about zapping aliens. This game looked pretty decent. I remember looking at this one, I was like, all right, this looks like it's playable, it looks, it looks okay. Like, I actually went into it kind of expecting it to be stupid because I thought, I think, like, the beginning of the trailer was stupid, but the actual gameplay looked decent. It does look quite generic. No, you're right. There are a lot of games that look very much like this. 
Uh, I think it's more about like the uh, the way that your player interacts with like the enemies and like the world. Planets and the sequel takes the core gameplay loop but reinvents it from a third person perspective, adding quite a bit of scale and complexity to the missions and wearing its Starship Troopers influences even more proudly on its sleeve. Yeah. Would you like to know more? Well, it hits PS5 and PC on February 8th, so there you go. One game that has been in the works for quite a while. I saw some people playing this game, the Skull and Bones game. I'm kind of excited about this one. I think it looks pretty decent. Skull and Bones, what began as a spin-off of Assassin's Creed. I tried to I tried to play it on stream. Really? It doesn't? Damn. Read Black Flag's naval combat Damn, has been sucks. delayed something like seven Because yeah, times, I only so saw a little me, bit I'm of it. I'm skeptical that this game will actually come out on February 16th, mm. but that's what they're saying this time, and that's on new I'll gen, play it PC, when it comes out, Amazon though. Luna. On the 29th, Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and company are back, joined by quite a few familiar faces, and now they're turned loose at a massive, sprawling, open world, and infinitely more detailed recreation of the original FF7's overworld map, which you can travel around by Chocobo, or on a Segway if you so desire. FF7... Th this is very cool. Um, maybe I, I need to eventually play the Final Fantasy VII remake. I never played Final Fantasy VII, so the remake will be my first time ever playing it. Remake was an I would obviously ambitious wait start, and it sounds like Rebirth is going to be a substantially larger undertaking in all the best ways. Homeworld 3 is the long overdue follow-up to a beloved deep What's space this? strategy game that was released over 20 oh, yeah, years ago. I saw on March this. 8th, this franchise emerges from cryosleep on PC, so here's hoping it can adapt to life in the 2020s. I, I don't know. I, 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 My expectations for this game are kind of low. I remember like listening to developers talk about like kind of some of the interactions in this game and the interactions and like the uh the, the gameplay seemed kind of interesting but i don't know if i'd really play it nice on march 20th one of the great grandpappies of survival horror gets mm -hmm. a new installment at a glance alone in the dark might seem like another remake along the lines of what dead space and resident evil did recently yeah. but it's being framed as a revival which is fitting given the southern gothic themes okay. it's telling a whole new story but longtime fans will likely get some deja vu as it is set in Terceto manor where the original 1992 game took place i've on never played a horror game like i've actually just literally never played one on March 22nd, Dragon's Dogma 2 drops. Okay, Fever so this is, uh, you got uh, now, now we're, now we're getting in, now we're, now this is, this is a situation. We will be playing this one. 100%. We anticipated not sequel to Capcom's criminally underrated open world action RPG. This has the same kind of extremely vocal fan base that Demon Souls did before FromSoft mm -hmm. dropped Dark Souls and it blew up so big it inspired a whole yeah. friggin' genre. That's not to say that Dragon's Dogma 2 is the second coming of Dark Souls, but it'll probably click with Elden Ring fans dying for a big, sprawling Western fantasy action sure. RPG with crunchy boss fights. Meanwhile, if you're ready to commit seppuku because Sony and Sucker Punch have been shinobi silent regarding the next Ghost of Tsushima, Rise of the Ronin might hold you over, and this'll likely click with anti Soulsborne fans as well. The PS4 I, uh... I mean, I remember I got really excited for Wu Long whenever it was going to come out, and then I played the game, and the fundamental game mechanics, I think, kind of sucked. So it's like I'm afraid to be excited for this game. Live exclusive open world action RPG comes courtesy of Team Ninja, the studio behind last year's Wu Long Fallen Dynasty, the Neo games, and of course, Ninja Gaiden. Still on March 22nd, and probably considerably less punishing than those last two games, there is Princess Peach Showtime. Mario's Mushroom Matriarch takes the spotlight in a long over- Who asked? ...do solo adventure of her own. What? This isn't a role-playing game in the conventional sense, but the whole thing is framed as a stage production and Peach dons uh -huh. different costumes with different abilities to play various roles, if you get sure. what I'm saying. The stages and set pieces will be just that, in a literal theatrical sense, so it'll be nice to see Peach flexing her dramatic range. Here's mm -hmm. hoping it's a crowd pleaser. I probably don't need to tell you that is exclusively on Switch, because Big it's surprise. a Nintendo game. Anyway, enough about cute princess stuff. If you're looking for an ass This is probably the, uh... Like, I would say that I'm equally as excited for this game and Dragon's Dogma 2. But in terms of, like, lore, this game might be a little bit ahead, because I've never, like... You know, this is based off of, like, an ancient Chinese myth. And I feel like we always hear about Norse mythology, Greek mythology, but I don't really know a lot about Chinese mythology. So I'm actually really just excited to see what this experience is going to be. Mark your I, I know it's Goku. For August I, I know. 20th, because that is when the long-awaited black myth Wukong will make its journey westward, probably to beat you up. 
Developed by Chinese studio Game Science, this Souls-like mm -hmm. pulls from the classic folktale Journey to the West, which was the original inspiration for Dragon Ball, and mm -hmm. which was loosely adapted into a video game back in 2010 in Ninja Theory's enslaved Odyssey to the West. Our Black Myth preview from last year says it's definitely got some Soulsborne DNA, but plays in a way that it's all its own. That's on new gen and PC. Meanwhile, a few weeks and about 38,000 years later, there's Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, which drops September 9th. Years of War's muscle-bound dudes in power armors with chainsaws. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a good point. Yeah, this is kind of like, yeah, it does play a lot like Years of War. I don't know. Like, I watched the gameplay, and I remember looking at the trailer for this game, and, like, half of the trailer seemed awesome, and the other half seemed like... God, like, can I... Is there, like, a fast-forward button for this? Like, it was so weird to me. Like, half of it really resonated, and half of it really didn't. I don't know. Guns copied Warhammer 40K's homework a little bit, so it was only fair that Warhammer did the same. Back in 2011, the original Space Marine was widely praised as a totally solid Gears-like, set against the utterly bonkers backdrop of Games Workshop's tabletop game. Now, a whole middle schooler's lifetime later, it's getting a sequel, which looks to take full advantage of new-gen hardware to render massive swarms of Tyranids for you to brutally eviscerate in the name of the Emperor. Following the same Warhammer 40... Yeah, I'll, I'll probably try that one out. I I'm looking... I like, I'm... Here's the thing. Like, I've really tried to make it a point to play all of the new games that come out. I have really tried to do that. And I, I will continue to try to do that this year as well. I didn't play Baldur's Gate 3, you're right. I didn't play every single one, but I played a lot of them. K naming convention of aggressive word plus type of melee mm -hmm. weapon followed by a number, there's also Hellblade 2, Senua Saga. The follow-up to Ninja Theory's 2017 sleeper hit, Senua's Sacrifice, Senua's Saga looks to be raising the bar in every possible way while maintaining its blend of dark fantasy and psychological horror, heavy- I'm not sure if this game's actually gonna be a good game or not. Like, my expectation is that this game is gonna be like kind of half visual novel, half game. I don't really know how to feel about that, but I could be wrong too. I never played the first one. It's just like this type of a game. It's like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Emphasis on the psychology. That's on Xbox Series and PC, but we do not have a release date quite yet. Yeah. Also on Xbox Series and PC with no hard release date is Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, though that does currently have a release window of sometime in the first quarter mm -hmm. of 2024. Considering this game's development was put on hold so members of the Ukrainian team could step away from their desks to defend their country from <laughs> yeah, invading Russian war. forces, I don't think anyone will fault the studio for the long wait or get mad if the release gets delayed further. Yeah. It looks like a massively ambitious game, and the original is a modern classic Classic, though maybe not exactly modern anymore. In the time since the last Stalker games release, the actual Chernobyl exclusion zone has become a tourist destination. The From this fuck? point forward, the rest of the games in this video do not have a release date or release window at all. I'm it not really sure. I mean, like, I might try that. I, I don't know if I'm gonna try that one out. It's the Wild West, so to speak. Speaking of which, one of these games is Star Wars Outlaws, in addition to looking mm -hmm. like a space western. It's also wild that it took this long to get a game that could be described as GTA, but with speeder bikes and blasters and Jabba the Hutt. From the looks of things, my expectations for this game are very low. I'm just going to be honest. I think they're just very low. Jedi Survivor. It was just like, I mean, it wasn't bad, right? It just, there's something about it that it just, it didn't really like. I, I don't know. Like it just, it wasn't like, it wasn't super great. Star Wars is dead? I don't know, like, it didn't resonate? I, I don't know, what, what, I don't know what there is about it. I'd have to really think about it. There were some things in Jedi Survivor that worked, other things that didn't. Because I, I would rate the game like an eight, right? I'd say a game's an eight, 8.5. So like, I don't think it's really a bad game, but I just didn't really, there are a lot of, like, nuances to combat I wasn't really a big fan of. Eight's a lot. Seven, maybe? Too buggy? There was a little bit of bugginess, but performance really hurt it. I wasn't a big deal for me. Hitboxes sucked. Most hitboxes in the game were actually decent. There was only a few bosses that were really bad. Can you say what it was? I think, you know what? Maybe the reason I didn't like it as much is that I didn't play the first game. So, like, the prior relationship that, like, Cal had with, like, the different characters, 
I had no context for it. So maybe that's why. Like, I thought the gameplay was okay. It was actually, you know, it was above, it was above average. That's what Outlaws is shaping up to be, though. To be precise, it's a Ubisoft game, so a more apt comparison might be Watch Dogs with Womp Rats. I am definitely not complaining at the prospect of an open-world Star Wars game that focuses on the scum and villainy of a galaxy far, far away. I will, however, complain if Bosk and Dengar and Zuckus don't show up. Boba Fett's fine, we get enough of him, mm -hmm. and Forlom, I could take it or leave it. IG-88, he's all right, but I really want Bosk and Dengar and Zuckus in there. Put those weird dudes in this game, please. Supergiant Games has been chugging along for over a decade, regularly putting- I mean, Hades is like, like, I played Hades a lot. Uh, I, I went through it, like, I mean, I put, I put like 40 hours, something like that, into the game. Uh, I really enjoyed it, I thought it was a great game. Out colorful, deceptively and the story was so unexpectedly good. Critics and fans alike, and Hades was met with such a unanimously positive reception that you really yeah. can't blame them for making a second installment, which is supposed to arrive sometime this year. For any Persona fans rolling their eyes at the casual newcomers flocking to Persona 3 Reload, mm -hmm. phew, I have just the thing, which you probably already know about, Metaphor Refantasio, a cool sounding name for a brand new RPG in a brand new universe from a ton of the people behind the Shin Megami Tensei slash Persona series. If you want a JRPG that doesn't go quite as hard in the paint or the fonts, there's always Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which remakes the beloved- I, uh, I had this on like Game, uh, GameCube, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, I don't remember the second game hardly at all, but I remember the first game pretty well. GameCube RPG for Switch, and which should be a nice follow-up to the Super Mario RPG remake that we got mm. way back in 2023. Yeah, I Vampire haven't tried that. Vampire the Masquerade that. Bloodlines 2 is yet another long-awaited sequel that became even more long-awaited after the decision was made to go back to square one in the hands of a new developer, but the good news is that developer is the Chinese room, the studio behind the Amnesia games and Dear Esther, so this vampire game might be kinda spooky the skin of a killer bill. If the phrase Seekin Densetsu means anything to you, you're probably well aware of Visions of Mana, but if you're not, it is the this first- This dude, like, I saw this game, and it was like, uh... This actually got me really excited. Uh, I mean, like, Secret of Mana was like one of the main games I played growing up. It was like a core, it's like a core memory game for me. So like, seeing this again, oh man. I'm all about mainline it. Mainline entry in quite some time. Bro, like, that was made, it wasn't made by, uh, you know, fucking Square Enix, it was made by Square Soft. Back in the fucking day. Time in Square I, I still have the original, uh, series. strategy guide for the game. back a million years like ago as a thick. Final Fantasy spinoff for the original Game Boy. Anyway, it's probably better known as Secret of Mana. On the I feel Super like, um, Secret of Mana back in the day, it had the same scope that's equivalent to what Elden Ring was. Like, it, the scope of that game was fucking insane. If you compare it to, like, other contemporary games for Super Nintendo... Nintendo, uh, here's the part of the video where I say that I would like to get an HD remake of Secret of Evermore, which was, like, the weird I sort of bastard one. American cousin of Secret of Mana that was on Super NES. I love that yeah, game, one of my favorite that. games of all time. I'm one of 17 people who feels that way. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about games that are coming out in the future. There's no shortage of big fat fantasy RPGs being cooked up by the fine folks at Xbox Game Studios, Avowed? and Avowed looks like it could make a nice amuse-bouche for anybody who's licking their chops waiting around for Fable Horizon, or Skyrim 2, Dragonborn Again, aka Elder Scrolls 6. Anyway, Avowed is set in Obsidian's Pillars of Eternity universe, and it looks like a fun first-person high fantasy jaunt, and based on Obsidian's pedigree- Seems should... pretty mediocre, man. Have some good twists and turns depending on what kind of bad decisions you make, you know, like a proper RPG. Yeah. This list is not alphabetical, but Zenless Zone Zero has too many Zs in the title to not put it last. That is the next free to play action RPG from the Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail team. And this one has a super stylish quasi. People had concerns about the combat in this game being too one dimensional. Uh, I, I talked to Tectone a bit about this. I'm not sure, really, if I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna like. I will play this game on release. I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but I'm not sure how much I'll play it. I think this might be like one of those situations where, you know, I, I did like with Tower of Fantasy because like this game's kind of like that, uh, where I play it a lot for like two weeks, then I just kind of move on futuristic urban setting that's going to be coming to mobile and PC and probably console at some point. 
Speaking of which, Genshin is expected to hit Switch at some point in 2024, and there's very good possibility that Nintendo might just drop a new console entirely, whether that is a Super Switch or a Switch U or something they need totally to, else entirely, probably with the better name. That'll, of course, have its own share of new games at launch and thereafter. I really and hope that they have, like, uh, one of the reasons why I haven't wanted to play uh, Tears of the Kingdom is it's, like, 30 FPS. Like, I played Bloodborne. I love Bloodborne. But I'd like it more if it was 60 FPS, you know? <laughs> like, there it is. Like I said, there's a ton of other stuff we didn't cover. Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC yeah. is going to be a substantial expansion to an already massive game. There are some rumblings about the next Doom game, possibly a prequel. And of course, long-awaited sequels like Metroid Prime 4 and Dragon Age. I watched, um, I watched S-Fan play the Metroid Prime remaster, and it looked really good. Age the Dreadwolf Rises, just to name a few, but as of recording this in late December 2023, details on all of those are pretty vague, so we can tackle them some other time. On that note, I'm going to shut up so my wonderful video editor, Chris Del Padre, can put the finishing touches on this video and our wonderful producer, Amanda Medina, can publish it and we can all shut down our computers for the holidays and go be with our loved ones. I mean, right after I tell you to sound off in the comments with the games that you're most excited about in 2024, especially if I forgot to mention them. Tell us why you're looking forward to them. Explain why or why not. Use complete sentences. Your answer is worth 10% of your final grade. For extra credit, go check out that video on January's big game releases and make sure you are following and subscribe to IGN on your platform of choice for all of the latest updates on upcoming games and other entertainment. And there's the bell. Happy New Year, everybody. I will see you later. I'm shutting my laptop. I'm gonna go and have some eggnog. Oh. Oh. And drop my mouse and f up my teleprompter. Oh no! I feel like we have a lot of really good games coming out this year. Coming. Everyone, what's twenty twenty three? I'm gonna be honest. Like, I think that there are a lot of games coming up that are like I'm excited for. Like, I mean, this comes out. It says eighteenth of January. Like, fuck, that's in like three weeks. It's in less than three weeks. Like this one, I really don't give a fuck about. Don't really care a whole lot. Uh, Tekken, I, I, there's a lot of Tekken fans that weren't happy that I wasn't as excited about it. Um, Enters the fray you know, with like, good for them, right? I'm not, I'm not a big Tekken fan, uh, but, you know, great. Uh, this game, I don't give a fuck about, really. Uh, what is the next game that I'm, like, excited for? Helldivers 2. I'll, I'll probably try to play this one on release. This one is, uh... It's weird, because I had such a different impression from this game, but I didn't look at enough of the gameplay. I just saw that there were a lot of people streaming it, but I think the reason why they were all streaming it was just simply because they were sponsored. So yeah, they forgot Soul Frame. Soul Frame's gameplay really didn't look that good. It was disappointing. Yeah, it had huge hype. Sure you'll play it? People said that about Monster Hunter, and then I played Monster Hunter. People said that about the Coffin of Andy and Laylee, and I played that fucking shit. I played the whole thing. People said that about, uh, what was the other game? Uh, the day before, I played that. Genshin 2? Well, I haven't gotten through everything, okay? But we have played a good number of games, and I can, I, I will continue to do so.